You are not ready? No, I am ready, but there was an order for the presentation. Which order? Like, uh, you were supposed to start and then Mr. Rehan and then I will be the last. No, no, I don't. I, I, I don't have any presentation to present. So just, 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 just opening words, Yanni. If you are not ready, I will ask uh, Rayhan to to start. Uh, as you like, I am ready. I can start, and Mr. Rayhan is ready too. Okay, please go ahead. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes, yes, I see it, yes. Yes, okay. Um, greetings, everyone. Uh, this talk will introduce you to the Sardis 5 meter radio telescope and the future 40 meter radio interferometer. My name is Asma, and uh, this project is funded by University of Sharjah, and the principal investigator is Dr. Elias Fernini. This project includes other members like uh, Arzu Nurani and Aisha Jett. So this talk will cover the objectives of this project. Uh, we'll talk about the Sharjah 5 meter radio telescope and its different components. We will go over the process of installing the system, some of the observations that we have done in the using the system, and an overview of the Sharjah 40 meter radio interferometer, the future project, and some simulations on the interferometer. We'll look at the control room of the system and finally will be the observation program that we have in the academy and we will conclude the talk with the SSC report. So the objective of this project is to or having a radio telescope in the academy is to get familiarized with radio astronomy. We also would like to set up a professional five meter radio telescope that is already uh, up and running and very, very soon, we will have a 40 meter radio interferometer also working in the academy. Um, we would like to conduct unique radio observations of the universe at 1.4 gigahertz or in the L band. And at the end, to initiate an undergraduate or graduate program in the radio astronomy. So, the charge of five meter radio telescope. What, what are the components of the system? is a parabolic antenna. The name is Spider 500A. It is an Italian made by uh, the Italian company Primerucci Lab. It is five meter in diameter and it is a prime focus type. It is made of a fine metallic mesh that provides a large collecting area and an overall uh, low overall weight. Speed horn works at 1420 and there's two types of polarization, circular polarization, uh, left and right hand. The mount is a computerized out as mount, uh, which can be completely uh, controlled using a computer. It is also completely weatherproof that is suitable, to, uh, suitable uh, for the UAE environment. It has an automatic tracking system for the target or the radio sources. It also has an electronic security system that parks the antenna in safe mode.
continue from uh, the last point. So the system has an electronic security system that parks the antenna whenever the wind exceeds uh, 50 kilometers per hour. Also, the system has a receiver that works at the same frequency with the 50 megahertz band. In addition to a, a mount unit power and a wind sensor unit power, as you see in the picture. Okay, using the uh, provided software, which is Radio Universe Pro software. This software helps you view the radio signal in real time. It helps you uh, capture radio maps of the different sources, and it has a list of many sources that you can observe. So how many systems implemented in the academy? First, we had to extend the wires underground and have a concrete base to install the pier on top of it. And on top of the pier, on top of the pier comes the electronic uh, out as mount, and this is the feed horn. So after assembling the dish parts in the uh, on site in the academy, we it was lifted and installed on top of the electronic mount, and this is a final image of how the telescope uh, should look like. There's also a security camera to track the telescope 24 hours and during the operation time. And there is, this is the uh, weather station that helps uh, record the wind speed and uh, wind speed and direction in addition to the rain levels. So what can we observe at this frequency? 1.4 gigahertz is a frequency suitable to observe many uh, ready sources. You have uh, the sun, you have Cygnus A, uh, Cassiopeia A, Sagittarius A, different galaxies and nebulae. And there's also the moon or the, the reflected, reflected uh, radiation of the moon's surface. This is an example of one of the observations uh, done using this uh, radio telescope, Spider 500A. The image is a radio map of the sun taken at 1.4 gigahertz. It is uh, so far the high resolution and that we, can, uh, we were able to obtain uh, using the system. It's a 63 by 63 pixel. Uh, the white area in the middle represents the sun, which is the area of maximum radio emission. So the angular resolution of the system is about 2.4 degrees. Now, the Sharjah 40 meter radio interferometer is going to be the first system in the MENA region it will also work on the same frequency 1.4 gigahertz or the uh, hydrogen line emission frequency. It will consist of three five meter radio telescopes, the one that we just uh, saw. And these telescopes will form a scale line triangle of three sides, 30, 40, and 50 meters. The system will have a resolution of 0 0.3 degrees and a collecting area that of an antenna 8.7 meter in diameter. So this is the uh, angular resolution of the telescope, uh, sorry, of the radio interferometer. Now, how did we get to this design? We, of course, had to run an, uh, a simulation using uh, an row simulation application. And the source that we observed in the simulation was Cygnus A. The duration of the simulation is about six minutes, which is the maximum that is provided by the application. Uh, so the interferometer at the end will form a scale line triangle with 30, 40, and 50 meter triangle. So, uh, sorry, 50 meters. Uh, this configuration results in a better image as compared to the circle and the one arm configuration. Now, this is the first design of the system, the interferometer. And this is a top view of the concrete bases or the platforms that will hold all the three telescopes. This is the design of the control room that will host all the receivers and the computers related to controlling the system. This is an actual image of the complete uh, control room in the academy. So to the left, we have the three telescopes installed and fully functional and to the right we have the uh, an, an image from inside of the control room you have all the three telescope uh, the telescope components and receivers and power units and also a 
easy to control each when we uh, first provide them. So what do we want to achieve using the system? Of course, we have to understand the spiral structure of the Milky Way, uh, map the rotation curves to determine the velocity of the hydrogen clouds in the spiral arms, and to observe hundreds of extended radio galaxies in a tender flux. We have listed about 70 to 72 sources so far of different radio, uh, radio sources that we can use it used to observe um, using this system, the 40 meter interferometer, and the resolution of the uh, uh, size, I mean, the size of, the, of these sources is about 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 degrees. Also to perform extensive radio surveys, uh, calculate mass of galaxies, and study the dynamics of individual galaxies. We will also be part of the potential extra terrestrial intelligence surge of, uh, of these types of signals. Also perform extensive radio survey of all different objects of the solar system, like the moon and Jupiter, which is a current study right now. And at the end, to establish an educational observatory for teaching radio astronomy and a research school for new radio astronomers. So at the end, we are now in the last phase of the interferometer. We are waiting for the correlator to be received and installed in the system. Also, we need to upgrade the cables to fiber optics to reduce the minimum attenuation. And at the end, to maybe, maybe very soon, to plan to extend the system to have more, six more antennas and make a baseline of 400 kilometers. That's all for this talk. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, we will leave them till the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Asma. Just to add uh, to what Asma says, so this is uh, uh, our first system, a 40 meter uh, composed of three dishes. Uh, we are planning to add uh, six more dishes uh, with a very long baseline. As you know, in Asumi, usually we say bigger is better. Uh, in terms of radio of radio wavelengths, so the longer the baseline, which is uh, the uh, the distance between the two farthest telescope, is very important because the resolution of a telescope uh, is inversely proportional uh, proportional to its uh, uh, to its baseline in radio astronomy or an optical telescope to its diameter. So the longer the baseline. Uh, the better is the, the resolution, especially for radio wavelength. Radio wavelengths have long, long wavelengths, centimeter, meters, and so on. So you need to have very, very, very big dish. Uh, you may know that the Chinese have built uh, this stable, this fixed 500 meter dish. And the only thing that does move and is the antenna or the what you call the uh, the feed horn. Uh, for us, so what we are planning to add six more telescopes uh, of the same kind, the same type each five meter uh, along a baseline as uh, hopefully as long as about 400 kilometers. Uh, at this wavelength, we need to have very, very good resolution because uh, as, uh, as man says, so uh, with at 1.4 gigahertz, uh, this 40, 40 meter radio interview, yes, it can observe hundreds of uh, extra galactic radio sources, uh, uh, especially those that are uh, beyond, uh, beyond the, um, the half degree in terms of the uh, largest angular size, uh, but in terms of the smallest, the smallest objects, uh, the nearby objects, the, and also the small ones, uh, it won't be able to resolve them. So hopefully this uh, uh, very long interferometer, this is how we are going to call it, will be very useful and hopefully uh, it will be funded by, by the University of Sharjah and also by the UAE Space Agency. Uh, so we are planning for that. So the proposal now is uh, is with the University of Sharjah. Uh, uh, it is under study, and uh, as far as we are concerned, as uh, as the academy, uh, so uh, we can contribute to the fund of this project, and hopefully, uh, it will it will see light. It may take uh, uh, maybe a couple of months, but because we need to choose uh, the best location. Uh, for this uh, interferometer, not not the best uh, look in terms of logistic, no, in terms of um, uh, putting the telescopes at the right location to to have the best uh, 
uh, UV coverage. Uh, so we don't have to have any redundancy. And as you know, how does an interferometer works? Well, it combines signals from all the telescopes and also it takes advantage of earth rotation. So that because you can't put telescopes everywhere, it will be very, very costly. Uh, so we're going to put them at a specific locations so that as earth rotates around itself, it will have the whole, the whole UV coverage. This is exactly how the VLA, the very large array in, uh, in, uh, uh, in New Mexico, in, uh, in Albuquerque, uh, in Socorro, in Magdalena, you have 27 telescopes and each one of them uh, is connected by fiber optics to the other one. So you have a system of 27 telescopes uh, spread over uh, uh, three arms. Each arm can, uh, uh, can hold nine telescopes. Usually there is all, always uh, uh, tw uh, the telescope number 28 in case one of these 27 telescopes uh, does not work well, so it can be, it can, it can be replaced. Any. So it is a very nice system uh, for the VLA. Uh, uh, the longest, the longest baseline. If we go to the, uh, uh, because VLA has different configuration A, B, C, D. A is when all the telescopes are very far away from from each other to simulate a radio dish 42 kilometers in diameter. Do you believe that? 42 kilometers. So the VLA, despite that it works in centimeter, it has a better resolution than the Hubble Space Telescope because it's 42. Then you go to B, a little bit closer to Z. The uh, uh, the last configura configuration D is when all three telescopes are very close to each other. So all 27 very close. So it's a beautiful site. You can Google it, and you can see how uh, you can see this uh, the difference in terms of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, these four different configurations. So our VL uh, we call it VLBI or VLBA. So uh, because we would like to uh, uh, to add it uh, to the present VLBI that we have to connect worldwide telescope to have a baseline as big as about uh, uh, more than 5,000 kilometers. Excellent. This is what they use uh, to observe uh, M87 black hole. Uh, our telescope now, our system now can do that because the observation of the M87 black hole was done in the millimeter wavelength. Uh, us, it works in the centimeter. So you would like to assess yourself in the next uh, Milky Way uh, black hole observation. So we need to change our receivers uh, to work in the millimeter wave band. But everything is possible. So this is what we are planning to do uh, in the uh, in the future. Uh, it takes uh, it takes time, uh, it takes patience for sure, and also it takes dedication because you need to have a, a good research group with you to go through all of this uh, process of having uh, uh, this uh, VLBI or this VLBA uh, here in uh, uh, in in Sharjah, and hopefully it will cover. Uh, the whole UAE. So we may put some telescopes in Ras al-Khaimah and also some telescopes in Abu Dhabi and maybe one telescope uh, uh, in, in Dubai. So all of this will, will be very nice system. So hopefully it will, see, it will see light. It may take some time, as I say, maybe between six to maybe one year. Uh, the, the problem is not with funding. The problem is uh, with choosing the, the right locations uh, for this uh, uh, for these six telescopes. I did contact uh, Dr. Filippo. Uh, maybe Asma did mention him. He's the uh, uh, CEO of uh, Pramashulab, the, the one that we are using uh, their dishes. And uh, he's going to help us uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to find out uh, the, best, the best location. So I did my homework about uh, maybe five months ago. I have chosen some locations because I have done some simulations and Asma has seen that she, she did present it uh, uh, in the IAC paper. Uh, so I have done some simulations uh, about uh, where can we put these telescopes. Uh, so besides the locations, yes, that's very important. So uh, we have some, I have some primary uh, locations, uh, but again, uh, you have to go beyond the logistic. Uh, do these locations have power? Uh, are they very well protected? Our experience with the UE Meteor Monitoring Network, uh, we're using it because uh, you have to overcome so many problems. But all of this, if we work together, so we can do it. We can do it. So this is just what I have to say. So we're going to extend this 40 meter radio interferometer to be uh, to to have more telescopes to get better resolution. Okay, uh, Mohammed Rahan, are you ready? Yes, doctor. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. 
Um, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mohammed Rihan. I'm a research assistant in the radio astronomy lab. Uh, in um, and I'm here today to talk about the uh, radio decametric radio telescope that uh, installed uh, array that installed in, in SAST uh, inside the academy in the backyard of the academy. So uh, let's begin the presentation. Uh, let me uh, share my screen and. Uh, um, okay, can you see? Yes, is my screen uh, clear? Yes, 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 we see it, yes. That's great. Okay, let me stop video too. Okay. Okay, um, let's uh, say words about, um, about the uh, project. So uh, this project is uh, funded by UAE Space Agency uh, to conduct radio astronomy for a wide sector of students from high school to BCS, uh, to, uh, to BSC, sorry, uh, by observing the astronomical events uh, as a radio emission from the planet Jupiter and, uh, and the sun. Uh, also the advanced research uh, could be done um, for example, uh, a different pattern of these radio bursts uh, might be affected by the uh, uh, might be affected by the uh, uh, the uh, ionospheric uh, status. Uh, f f uh, to be honest, uh, there are uh, a lot of factors that may affect the 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 the, the ionospheric the uh, the decametric radio reception. Uh, some of them is the ionospheric. Uh, status. Uh, so, which means uh, we have a wide area for uh, research uh, in this field. Um, uh, as a historical view for the decametric radio uh, uh, telescopy, um, uh, the radio astronomy was born in 1930 when Karl Jansky, an American uh, scientist, physicist, and, and radio engineer, uh, was assigned. Uh, uh, the job of investigating the source of static interference uh, that might that, 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 that might be uh, interfere with the uh, radio uh, networking. Uh, so he discovered by chance radio waves, sorry, uh, he discovered by chance radio waves uh, emitting from the Milky Way at 20 point, uh, or 20 megahertz. This is, this is called the decametric uh, wave uh, 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 range uh, because it, it is a it is a multiple of of, of meters or, or tens of meters. So uh, in that day, uh, the uh, radio astronomy uh, was born, as we mentioned, and here we can see the uh, the the uh, his uh, his array uh, composed by uh, eight uh, dipoles. Uh, uh, rotate, uh, rotatable dipoles. He built it to investigate and to discover the uh, radio decametric emission uh, comes from space. Um, we. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's me. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me remove the this one first, and uh, I have to remove this. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so again, yes. Um, this is the one of the most important sources of the radio, the chemistry radio emission. It is a Jovian radio emission. So the radio, uh, Jovian radio emission, the Jovian system consists uh, of the planet Jupiter and its moon Io. Uh, it is subjected to the to the uh, to the larger. Uh, or stronger uh, gravitational forces. So the Jovian radio signals come in two uh, types, the L burst and short bursts. We call it L and S bursts. So the long burst sounds, looks like um, uh, ocean waves, uh, whereas the uh, short ones sounds looks like a popcorn bobbings. So these storms are produced by the cone of the uh, radiation that, 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 we, we, that we, we can see it here, okay? Uh, so this uh, cone of radiation emits the uh, the uh, decametric uh, radio waves. 
uh, the source or the physic uh, the, the mechanism of uh, this emitting it comes from uh, comes from the uh, moving charges uh, uh, while it's crossing the uh, the uh, enormous magnetic field of Jupiter. So this is the most important or one of these uh, of our observations. The second one, we know the sun it is the strongest source of the electromagnetic uh, radiation in all bands, in all directions, uh, sorry, in all uh, radi radiations, uh, from radio waves to, uh, to, to, to gamma ray. Um, so uh, the in terms of radio uh, radiation, we have uh, the uh, the main source of the radio uh, radio uh, uh, emission from the sun comes from the uh, sorry comes from the uh, sun flares. So the sun flares uh, produce a uh, VLF uh, uh, VLF uh, uh, v. Uh, it is a very low frequencies and VHF very high frequencies and between them among them the decametric uh, radio waves or the HF uh, band. Uh, here we can see some of uh, our uh, observations. Um, it is a solar uh, solar flare uh, fingerprint or, or radio print uh, for the solar uh, flare. Uh, so we can see uh, we can see it is a, it is a clear to observe the uh, shark uh, fin shape uh, uh, here in, in this one. Uh, it was uh, in uh, 11th of January, 2020. And we have another, another good example for what we received. Uh, it is another one in uh, 20th of uh, May, 2020. Uh, also, we can uh, see some of, uh, or show some of the uh, Jovian uh, observations. Uh, here we can find the vertical spikes of the uh, of the uh, Jovian emission. This is a, a short burst, so it is a good example for a short burst that what we have. Uh, another one we can see um, at the 14th of September 2020. So it is uh, around one one month ago. We received this. A kind of burst. It is a good example for a long uh, radio burst uh, that comes from uh, Jupiter uh, as a decimetric radio emission. So our our uh, uh, our uh, uh, operating uh, frequency is uh, twenty point one megahertz. It uh, matches around fifteen meters wavelength. For any um, radio telescope system, uh, we have uh, components, but the, the most the most important um, uh, parts of uh, of any radio telescope system uh, is an uh, antenna uh, and uh, transmission line, calibrator receivers, and uh, of course uh, data monitoring and data analysis. So uh, let's start with with uh, the uh, some. Uh, some uh, antennas or arrays that commonly used in low frequency uh, ast radio astronomy. So we have a single uh, half wave dipole like this one. It is a single dipole. We we use the same uh, the same configuration here, but as as an array, not not uh, not a single one. Also, there is a uh, inverted V uh, dipole like what uh, what what, what uh, they have in uh, low far. It is a uh, uh, it is uh, the largest uh, uh, radio telescope uh, working in low frequency in, in Europe. Uh, so most of of of, the, of, the, of their disc, uh, of their uh, antennas uh, has the uh, have the same uh, the same uh, shape or same design. It's called inverted V uh, dipole, uh, and each of these uh, uh, of these designs has its 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 uh, advantages and disadvantages. By the way, so. And here is a folded half wave dipole. So this is a, a folded half wave dipole. It gives a, um, a wide band of, uh, or a broad band of receiving in frequencies. So you can you can use it for uh, uh, frequencies, let's say from 15 megahertz to 30 megahertz by using the same antenna. Uh, no need to use uh, uh, other, other, uh, another dipoles. So this is a most common uh, configurations of the antenna that we use in radio astronomy. So uh, here is the transmission line that we use in, in, in our project. Uh, uh, 
Uh, it is a uh, coax cable. This is called a coax cable. Uh, so it is a trans kind of transmission line that use a, uh, to carry uh, the high frequency uh, electrical uh, signals. Uh, uh, the approximate impedance of this of this kind of uh, of, uh, of uh, transmission lines or, or coax cable uh, it is uh, between a uh, 30 uh, sorry 53 to 75 so we use a 73 uh, transmission line uh, and connected uh, as as we see here uh, so assume uh, this is a uh, the 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 units of the of the antenna we will we'll talk about uh, about this array this dual array so this is the unit sorry this unit one unit two unit three unit four and we connect each each antenna in in the same unit with the other uh, with the other unit by using this kind of transmission lines uh, and of course by using the this uh, small gray box it's, it's called uh, combiners so we combine all these signals to 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 uh, to 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 be received in in uh, receivers uh, as we see we, we you can see uh, there is a certain uh, length of of all these transmission lines so you cannot uh, use any random length of of these uh, of the transmission lines also for the dipoles itself uh, as we see here the sast array this is the original uh, Jovian, or sorry, this is the or original Jovi antenna array uh, designed from NASA, uh, and it consists of a dual uh, dipole, only this unit. But we expand this uh, this uh, this kind of uh, arrays to uh, to build uh, this large array. It, it uh, consists of um, eight dipoles uh, like this, uh, stacked side by side. Uh, to the receiver. So this is the original one, and uh, you can see it is a uh, uh, there is a, a certain length for each dipole. There is a certain length for each uh, transmission line to match this system uh, perfectly. So if, if if we if we use or changing uh, by changing the the length of of the uh, transmission lines or or, or use a, a different uh, uh, length of uh, of the dipoles, uh, we can uh, miss the the, the signal. Um, uh, so here we can see the uh, sorry. Here we can see the the uh, uh, dual dipole, uh, dual uh, array, and here is the signal array. The difference between them is the beaming pattern. So while the uh, dual ar array uh, has a, uh, having having um, um, uh, Beaming pattern uh, tilted to Jupiter around the 50 53 elevation angle, uh, but the signal one, uh, single one, uh, is uh, it has a, a beaming pattern uh, pointing uh, upward directly upward to match the sun during uh, this summer season. And uh, um, finally, we have to connect all of this stuff with the receivers and data. Uh, uh, and data uh, monitoring. So we use a, a radio sky vibe uh, software. Uh, it is a licensed software designed uh, for us with a radio Jovi, uh, radio Jovi project uh, to collect, to store, to uh, to edit the data that we received. Uh, so this software uh, records uh, graphs, and uh, it is uh, it is sorry, uh, and it is uh, able to. Uh, to uh, to uh, record uh, audio uh, files uh, in wave format uh, so uh, we use this this audio uh, wave oh, sorry this audio files to investigate and to determine what we are observing in the in the monitor uh, if if this uh, graph or, or curve uh, related to uh, to the Jovian storm or to to, to solar uh, bear, radio burst, or it, it is a, it is a only a, a terrestrial interference, radio interference. So it is it is very important to use this uh, this uh, this kind of uh, softwares. Uh, we use it, and I think um, not. I think I I, I saw many 
uh, projects uh, other than the, the, the Jovi and uh, Jovi uh, project use the same uh, software. So it is very useful software, especially if you calibrate it by the, uh, the calibrator. So you can calibrate it uh, by, by its setting. So this is uh, in brief. Uh, our project, the Dikimetric uh, Radio uh, Telescope, uh, and thank you. Uh, this is what we have today. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed. Any uh, any questions? Even though so we have a very small group today, it is Saturday, so everyone uh, is taking uh, is taking a break, and except us, and so we are still here around. Any questions from the group? Uh, I have I have. Uh, uh, I have prepared some. Uh, uh, let me let me share my screen with you, please. Do you see my screen? You don't see it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me get this. This one. Okay, you see it now my screen? Yes. Okay, so this is uh, just some simulation about uh, how you can uh, uh, build your interferometer. So just to complement what uh, Asma and also what Mohammed has said, uh, this in regard of the uh, addition of six radio telescope to what we have today, uh, UAE very long baseline radio interferometry uh, so this is the plan. Uh, besides what we have as, uh, as, as, as a free telescope here, so you can see the telescope that we have here. Uh, so I'd like to add uh, six more uh, along this long baseline, about 400 kilometers long. Uh, why we're doing it this way? Well, because if we do a simulation, this is, uh, we'd like to do a simulation on this uh, very, very, uh, famous radio galaxy uh, so, uh, radio source uh, signals a part of the signals constellation uh, it is also termed a 3c 405 third cambridge catalog number 405 it is not a very far away uh, radio galaxy it is just at the ratio of about 0.05 uh, uh, two, uh, it is about 232 uh, megaparsec from us and uh, this is its upper is apartment so this is a radio period. this is a six centimeter a VLA map of signals A. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, radio image, meaning that you're talking about false color image. Okay, um, uh, the optical image is just here in the middle. Oh, and this is the, uh, the, the radio. So what you can see, this is a typical, a typical radio galaxy. What you see, you see the nucleus, the radio nucleus. You see here beautiful two jets, one goes in, going to the, uh, uh, to the right and one going to the left, even to the left is very, very faint because sometimes you only see one bright jet, what we call the one that you see, the one that is directed toward you. It is, as we say, Doppler, uh, Doppler boosted, uh, but the other one, because it is, uh, it is uh, directed away from you, it is Doppler and boosted. So that's why you, you won't be able to see it if you don't have, uh, if you don't have uh, enough uh, sensitivity uh, for your telescope. So what you can see here, so there's something going on inside. So there's a supermassive black hole inside ejecting these uh, this, uh, twin jets on opposite direction. So matter is being ejected from the black hole and it goes uh, kilo parsec and until it, will, uh, until it will collide with the external medium there, uh, there will be some kind of uh, breaking and this breaking, we show it as this very, very uh, uh, bright spots. We call them hot spots, not hot because hot it is thermal. We are talking about the radio emission. This is uh, this is second radiation, so there is no no thermal here. So it is just uh, uh, where you have uh, a high concentration, or, or where the particles emit most of the second radiation here. So this was the jet is going to impact, but as you can see, the jet does not go directly and impact. Uh, so there is something going on here uh, It has been going for uh, for for billions of years to have this very huge radio lobes as we call them. This is where most of the radio emission comes from. So you have one, uh, you have the double radio lobe. So that's why we call this signals A, a classical double radio source. Because you have these two lobes, one to the right, as you can see it, one to the left. And you can see they all they have almost uh, almost the same um, the same size. Even though, as you can see, they are not they are not at the same distance from the center. Look, uh, if you compare 
how far away is uh, what is between the nucleus and the hottest spot here to the right, and the nucleus here and the hottest spot here to the left. You see, it is uh, it is asymmetric. So this asymmetry can can can, but it is not. Uh, it can be because we are looking. Uh, we, we we are looking. The, the one that has the jet is the one that is. Uh, uh pointing toward us and the one that doesn't have the jet is the one that is uh, pointing away it's like if we have some kind of projection effect so this is a typical uh, uh, radio galaxy where i do most of my research on them so i did observe tens and tens and tens of them radio galaxies and also crazy so uh we're going to do what we're going to simulate this uh, very powerful radio galaxy uh signals a we have some other powerful like uh like um, like Cassiopeia A is also a very, very uh, bright, uh, bright radio galaxy. So this is uh, Cygnus A. So how can you simulate it? Well, there is a very nice software. You can use it. Uh, it is an RIO software. It is public, so you can, uh, you can use it to do some simulations. So to do what? Uh, so in this simulation, uh, we're using, so what we have inside, we have three telescopes. This, like it is representing uh, our uh, our uh, 40 meter radio interferometer and we are adding look how many antennas here we have so we have uh, uh, we are adding two and two and two and two so four times two as far as so it is eight so eight plus 11 so it is eight new telescope plus three or telescopes uh, observing time 60 minutes this is the maximum time allowed by the simulations and look what we see so this is uh, this is signals eight you see some side lobes. You see these uh, these fringes, uh, but uh, usually, uh, if you do radio astronomy, you can get rid of them. So you have to do a lot of calibration uh, before you do your data reduction. And when you when you do your data reduction, uh, you can clear out all of these fringes. But what you see depends upon what depends upon the number of antennas. The more you have, the more coverage. And the better is what the better is the radio image. So this here it is 11, uh, 11, uh, 11 telescopes. So I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, please uh, be attentive. So look how things are going to change because I'm going to change the location of the telescope. Okay. So this is an, uh, 11 telescopes. Okay. I'm going to change. Look now nine telescopes, but I changed the location. Now we have some kind of uh, uh, a circle design. So the telescopes are all around. So we put them at, at equal distance uh, from what we have as, uh, uh, as, uh, as the 40 radio, uh, the 40 meter radio interferometer. So the image now is smoother. You can compare between this one, look at it here, and this one, so now it is a little bit smoother. But it's good that you can see both jets, you can see them. We may have lost the nucleus heat, so what's this, it may not be very sensitive, but you can see at least you can see part of the jets here. You can see them, and these are some uh, uh, some artifacts that you can clear them when you do your uh, reduction. Uh, look here, uh, it's look like uh, the VLA, but a small a small VLA. Look how bad is the image. Now uh, look at it when you add more. Look at it when you have few telescopes. Uh, doctor, doctor. Yes, uh, doctor. Your uh, yes, Tom. Sorry, yes. Uh, your 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 screen is freezing. It's freezing. Uh, not yes. freezing, Victor. You share only uh, the, uh, I think, Firefox. Uh, please, can you share desktop? It's better. So you can uh, move from Firefox to another page or something like this. OK, so uh, you mean uh, using my PowerPoint, no? No, no, no. OK, let me stop share, then I will share again, OK? Sorry yes. for that, sorry. No problem. So share. Share, share. Is this now okay? Uh, yes, doctor, yes. Yes. So do you want me to repeat? Uh, no, no, just a uh, slideshow, quick slideshow, doctor, please. I, I remember, for me, I remember you, what did you say? Okay, now you see the full, the full, uh, the full, uh, the full slide? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so look, 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 look at the number of telescopes. Look at the image to the right, and look when I increase the number of telescopes. So this is nine, a wide design, and this is thirteen. Look, it is much, much better. 
you can see very clearly, you can see the jet here mentioned. I can see both the jets, and we may see also the nucleus here in the in the middle. So the more telescope, this is like a VID. This is a 13 antenna. The VID has 27, much, much better. I look here. We are having this uh, like double circle design. So we have the outer circle, and also the inner circle. So you get, it's not, it's not the right UV coverage. How about if I put them along a line? This is what you'd like to do. Look. So six new and three old. This is what we have as, uh, as, as, so this is the image. So it does not look very well, but at least you can see the overall structure of signal scan. How about if I have a spiral one? But look at the number of telescope, huh? 40. Look how beautiful it is. The image is excellent. You can see the, the, uh, the nucleus, you can see the lobes, you can see the jets. Very, very, very nice uh, uh, radio image. But look at the number of telescopes, 40 of them. Unbelievable. So if, you, if we ask the University of Sharjah to sponsor 40 telescopes, <laughs> next, <laughs> next year will be in Algeria, setting, setting uh, sardine. Excuse me, doctor, for this question. Uh, I, I can conclude uh, uh, about the, the, this, this uh, designs of, of, of arrays or the yes. shape of array. Uh, the most uh, uh, optimum uh, shape is the triangle. Uh, because it it it, it make a, a good balance between the number of uh, telescope that we use and the area. Yes, yes, and also you have to take into account uh, Earth rotation. So you have to feel the gaps. You don't have telescopes everywhere here. So as Earth rotates, so you're going to feel the gaps, and you're going to have a full UV coverage of your radio source. So your beam is going to uh, sweep all of that radio source. So there will be no so there will be no discontinuous. Uh, uh, or, the, or every every part of your, your radio, uh, radio source will be uh, swept out by your beam. So there'll be no missing, there'll be no missing point. This is exactly what you what you have here. So this spiral shape is excellent. But look at look at the number of telescopes. But it can, can, can consume more money. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, it will, it will. Uh, how about if I choose only twenty? Look at it here and so on. So this is this is our uh, this is our present. Uh, you can see this is our present. Uh, uh, configuration. So we have three telescopes, but this is circle configuration. Look, at, le at least we can see uh, part of the Cygnus A, uh, but we are losing uh, the other part. Uh, this is putting them in line, so very bad UV coverage. Uh, this is what you have right now. So, uh, and even though uh, Cygnus A is quite a big source, uh, so uh, so we can we can map it we can map it and we can map tens using the present uh, 40 meter once all three telescopes are connected as, as I said so we can we can we, we can uh, we can observe hundreds of these extended extragatic radio sources so we have hundreds of them so we can do that uh, this is just a second configuration and so on this is uh, the same the same the same as before yeah, the same as before Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. So just to let you feel that uh, putting more telescopes, uh, choosing the right configuration uh, is, is crucial when you observe uh, your, your radio sources. So this is, this is very important. Okay, this is what I wanted to say in this presentation. Uh, I don't know what I am. Okay, stop sharing. Okay, any questions? So uh, I apologize for uh, for Isam. So we uh, we had you uh, with us for one hour. You should be with your family, but uh, this is life. No, no, doctor. No, <laughs> this is fine for me. <laughs> is, the work is work, doctor. Don't worry about it. Yeah. The main thing that uh, it is uh, it is recorded. And uh, if anyone can return to it later on, uh, because we need uh, to build uh, our own SAS uh, uh, video library. I believe we have done uh, so many activities during the past two years. Uh, most of them were not recorded, but uh, using uh, Zoom, using Microsoft Team, I believe it was an occasion uh, to have all of our lectures recorded <coughs> on YouTube and anyone can refer to them later on. That's excellent. So we are building. Uh, a library of all of lectures 
that uh, schools can use them and so on because uh, we are part of what you call the uh, public outreach. So we are presenting what we do as research to the public and we are making, uh, making it as simple as, uh, uh, as possible. Uh, anything to say, please? I see Aisha connected. Thank you, Aisha. I see Tarifa connected. Thank, thank you, Tarifa. Uh, thank you, uh, Mohammed. Uh, thank you, Asma. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, even though even though we're waiting for Adhan to pray Dhuhr, but we had to wait and, until we finish. We pray Dhuhr, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Isam. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. So if we have nothing to say, so see you all tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you very much. Inshallah. Thank you for your time. Assalamu alaikum.